Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Claiborne. So it's been a hot minute since we've been on the bunny trail and I've been wanting to get these hostas put in. And I had mentioned in a previous video that I wanted to put my hostas in um, via hugel culture this time. So I'm not a strapping Viking. I'm not gonna dig a big giant pit um, for depositing the village trash. <laughs> refuge into. Um, I'm just me. So my pit is going to be uh, on a mini scale. It's going to be a mini pit and I'm going to put in some mini wood. Hugo culture basically means mound culture or you're planting something on a mound and under that mound is your discarded whatevers. So usually it's wood and people are like, yeah, but new wood New wood in a hugel culture bed or a hugel bed um, does kind of steal the carbon or the nitrogen for the first few years. So I always try to put old, decayed, already halfway decayed wood in any of my hugel culture beds. And that's just always worked for me. The whole idea behind hugel culture is that your plants, well, for one, it's a place for you to bury stuff and it creates a mound at first and year you know as the years go on that mound starts to sink down into the natural landscape it's a little bit more interesting than just flat ground and um it's slowly going to decay everything that you buried and that decay is going to feed your plants that you plant on that mound so basically it's mound planting for the future so let's go do this thing A little secret, um, the insect repellent that I made um, actually is very concentrated. And so you can really water that down. So I use that much insect repellent to that much water. And later on this summer when the bergamot's in bloom, I'll go over again um, how to make that. And I spray down my little kneeling pad and I spray down uh, my feet, my shoes, uh, and my, waist my, uh, my waistband before I ever work out in the woods. Whoa, whoa. He didn't leave mama much room. So, I asked my little Scandinavian friend if uh, he had any information, and I got distracted by this, what is that, one of those hummingbird insects? Hummingbird moth? Wow, he's pretty incredible. So anyway, uh, I was talking to my little Scandinavian friend about hugo culture, and he's informed me that since he's gonna live right next door to this hugo bed, he wanted it 30 feet away from his house because it can cause termites. I'm like, well, it can, but you know, okay, we'll keep it 30 feet away from you. Okay, and the term um, hugel culture uh, wasn't really the coin, the phrase wasn't really coined until 1962 when a gentleman had written a book on it. Um, the wood that you choose to put in there, the softer woods, of course, are going to break down much, much faster. I have woods like cedar, hedge, oak. Those are all hardwoods. They're going to take a lot longer to break down. So that's why I just go ahead and go after um, almost decayed wood to even start with. So since I have an abundance of it, that's what I'm going to use. And it, the wood will act like a sponge, actually. So it actually holds the water when it needs the water, and then it releases the water when it has plenty of water. So hugel culture just makes really good sense if you're going to be planting in an area like I am right here along the bunny trail with the um, hostas and the other um, deep woodland plants that I have here. And I don't really wanna like have to come down here and take care of it very much. I want it to kind of take care of itself. So I think uh, just adding a small hool bed in here for some of the hostas is gonna be fantastic. Okay, so I dug my pit and like I said, it's just a mini pit. 
um, but it's going to work for this garden for this purpose. Um, I didn't see a lot of insect activity and only one earthworm and I went at least a foot down. Um, I did get a lot of really cool rocks though, so <laughs> I'm going to dedicate this video to my friend RLJ at uh, Frog Pond. And I'll put up a link to his channel. Um, if you're interested in rocks, he is a bit of a rockologist. You might want to hop on his channel and check his channel out. He has some interesting videos. So I'm going to dedicate this to him. So in my pit, I'm ready to put my decayed wood. I'm going to put it at the bottom. And then I have a bag of green organics. Uh, I think some stuff I just pulled out of the medicine garden and it's mixed with a little bit of leaves so it's mostly nitrogen and a little carbon and then I have bunny poo and straw which is mostly nitrogen and a little bit of carbon so here we go let's layer this up so I ended up not even disturbing any of the wild anemone that's actually spreading which is very cool. Um, but I got this neat little mound. You can kind of tell that that's a mound. You can see where it goes like that, right? So this is a mini version and um, normally they're done like five to six feet high. Well, there's no way I can do that, but I think it's pretty cool. And I got some rocks that I can put around it and mark it. And I think I could fit at least two hostas there. So uh, we got a bunch of hostas to put in now. So let's go grab those hostas. Ooh, we worked hard on this, <laughs> but it's done. Yay. So here's the final project. Um, I bought three different hostas. I bought, uh, Royal Standard, Earth Angel, and Woolala. La La. And then when you buy your hostas, they're kind of like root bound. So with a little bit of coaxing um, with your trowel and with your fingers, you can kind of work those roots apart. And you can get two and sometimes even three plants per pot. So this was three pots and I got all of these plants. So you guys, thanks for hanging out with this. Uh, we had a great time doing this with you guys. I'm going to hang out here for a little bit longer with my friend and he is going to tell me all about that little winged creature that we saw earlier. I can't wait to find out more information on that little guy. Much love and light. Blessed be.